you are about to see a Fix It Friday video where an it person with very little technical skill or knowledge would attempt to fix something. This is not a how-to video and is likely to be factually incorrect and at times possibly dangerous. Please don't copy Kip and see this video for limited entertainment purposes only. Roll titles! Now in today's video I have got this from eBay and it is a Mega Drive, the original version, and it is untested. Now usually when you buy things from eBay that are untested, it means that they don't work. Now I will give the seller a slight benefit of the doubt here because it was sold without a power adapter and a video cable, so it is essentially just the Mega Drive on its own. It might be that he was unable to test it. I guess uh, we'll uh, have a little look and see. Now something I have discovered, which not all of you will know this because I certainly didn't, is there is a different power adapter and different video output on the Mega Drive 1 and the Mega Drive 2. So both of them require their own video cable and their own power supply. I was thinking, oh well I don't need another video cable and another power supply because I got them in the Mega Drive 2, which uh, I'll put the video up there about where I ripped off the seller of that. Um, so yeah, I was sort of quite happy that I wouldn't need anything else. I did a little bit of research and uh, turns out I was very wrong. They did change both the power input and the video output on the different versions. So cosmetically, this certainly isn't the best console I've seen, but it's certainly not the worst. And there it is. So we've got a bit of dust down there, some scratches, some sort of pinky colored paint there. But, you know, oh, it was, it was pat tested um, in 2009. So at least we knew, no, it was working in 2009. That's a blessed relief. It does look slightly rusty. You can see the metal shielding through these uh, air holes 1601-05 model don't know where that lands in the sort of model numbers don't know whether this is a relatively newer version or an older version um, on the back we've got the rf out we've got the rgb out and we've got the power in and yeah we've also got headphone adapter on the front which is something different between the mega drive one and the mega drive two this has a headphone adapter which gives you stereo sound because I think the output through the back here is actually mono. So you could put on a set of headphones and get some glorious stereo sound. Now the Mega Drive does actually have quite a good sound chip so uh, yeah that's not actually a bad shout. But the idea of this video is I'm going to see if this works and if it doesn't work fix it and then um, maybe give it a bit of restoration and a clean. I mean, I think anything that I can do to this will improve it because it looks a bit sad. It almost looks like it's been refurbished by DK Oldies. Not many of you will get that reference, but um, yeah, DK Oldies are basically a retailer in America that sell consoles like these at inflated prices and they say that they refurbish them, but they don't. They might give the outside a bit of a wipe down but um, yeah, on the inside, they are not refurbished. Uh, yeah, so search for DK Oldie videos once you finish watching this one, of course. Anyway, I'm blathering. Right, okay, so um, let's get some wires out and um, put the video output on the monitor behind me and we can see if it works. Actually, while I'm plugging in the cables and everything, I will give a shout out to all of those who've joined the channel. Let's tell you who those wonderful people are this week. First of all, we've got those Kip fans who are no-name added. Matt Love is JRC Electrical for the Burbs, Tim Salt and Mark C. Then we've got those wonderful early birds. They're always up early. It's Roberta Gorosum, some, 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 Dean Ball, Gary Bannon, The Coder, Sean at Cablesmith Electrical and Wayne at A1 Electrical Services. 
And then I've got so much love for those Kip lovers who are Richard R. Blaster, Bella Webster, Lawrence, Adventure Rachel, and now Stesticks Fix. Thank you so much for upgrading, sir. Then I've got my gorgeous, wonderful Kip Nutter, who is Becky Becky Boobar. Thank you so much, Becky, for all your love and support. And then we've got the mental, the Kip mental. It's David Flippin' Elphick. He's still splashing the cash. What a madman. Thank you so much, David. Thank you all of you, basically. So thank you everyone who has joined the channel. If you want to join the channel, then please do consider it. It really does help me afford all this nonsense. <laughs> so our Mega Drive is all plugged in and our capture output is displayed on the screen there. And also I'll put it in that corner if there is indeed any video output. So uh, I've got Sonic the Hedgehog here. We tried this on the Mega Drive 2 and it worked just fine. So hopefully, if everything goes to the plan, then um, I should just be able to plop this in and switch on the console and it will work. Will it work? Oh, you'll, you'll know because this will be a Fix It Friday video if it doesn't. <sighs> right, here we go. So power light is on, good start but no video output. Yeah, it doesn't even have like a black screen. Oh, hang on. Right, my mistake. I haven't got the OSSC set on the right input. So look, this is interesting. So if we turn it on, should get the thing to change. Yeah, there we go, it's got, got a black screen. And look, it is sensing a signal out of this. So we've got power, and it's saying that there is a signal coming out. This is outputting something. Hmm. Okay. Well, it looks like we've got to fix it Friday. Actually, before I before I just definitely definitely guarantee it, let's try theme park just to make sure. I mean, I'm pretty certain there's absolutely nothing wrong with that Sonic game, but we've got to double check. Oh, well, I'm really flipping confused now. It's working perfectly. Let me get a controller. Well, I'll be buggered. It's oh, a tight old squeeze in there. I'm really confused. Because that Sonic game was okay. Curiouser and curiouser. Got some IPA here. I've actually been distilling my IPA into these little bottles, which means you've got a bit more control over them. I think I've seen Big Clive using these. I'll put a link in the description. But yeah, you just get a little uh, nozzly bit and you can actually be a bit more controlled with where you put it. So I'm just gonna give this a clean. Oh, hello. Probably, probably should have cleaned this first. Mucky. That's good in some way, I suppose. Because one game that I did own that I'm gonna look at again is the Sonic 2 game and that didn't work at all. Um, but there'll probably be a Fix It Friday on that. I've not given it a proper clean or anything like that. So that might be a very short Fix It Friday video. Almost like a tea break fix video. Got a bit of a cold at the moment. So I'm drinking a weak lemon drink from my thermos. Right, Sonic's been given a clean. Will he work? Well, there we go. Playing Sonic backwards is not a good idea. Okay, so I take back the um, rude things I said about the uh, eBay seller because this works. It's just fine and dandy. But it is rather gross. So I think it really needs a damn good clean and I'm going to apply a capacitor kit which will replace all the capacitors in here. And also I've got some volt new voltage regulators as well because those are prone to failure just to sort of future proof it. So I think now in the next part of the video, we will get this apart, we will recap it, and we will clean it to within an inch of its flipping life. So um, let's do a jump cut to where my hair's going to look different, 
and um, we'll get on with that. So see you in a second. Hello, I'm back. Something awesome that's happened this week is I've gone over 3 million views on YouTube. Thank you so much to everyone who's viewed one of my videos. And uh, oh yeah, look, I've gone over 10,500 subscribers. So thank you all of you for being part of this epic YouTube journey with me. We're gonna get to 100,000. Oh, we're talking of that. Congratulations to Stez Sticks Fix for going over 100K. You really do deserve it. There are a lot of YouTubers out there and not all of them are good and not all of them are nice people, but Stez Sticks Fix is very good and he's a very nice human being. So well done, Stez and your Stixy Fixies. Anyway, talking about Stixy Fixies, the blue mat is out, the Mega Drive is on it and I've got a capacitor kit from Digital Delights on eBay. Now I use one of their capacitor kits for my Game Boy repair video, which I will put up there, there, that side, that side. They make these really nice capacitor kits. Now, if you don't know why I'm replacing the capacitors in this Mega Drive, even though it's fully working, basically electrolytic capacitors have electrolytics inside them. And over time they can leak and cause damage to the board and they can bulge. And consoles like the original Xbox really suffer badly from leaking capacitors. So by putting in some brand new high quality capacitors like this, it means that it will preserve the life of this. So even though it doesn't have any problems at the moment, it will mean that it will, should stay that way into the future. And also I've opted to replace the voltage regulators as well. Again, they're obviously working in this mega drive but it just prolongs the life of these things. So I think what I'm gonna do is, for this part of the video, I'm gonna crack it open, put in the capacitors and the voltage regulators, and then I'm gonna concentrate on the cleaning. Yeah, I'm gonna make a mess with like flux and solder and everything like that when I'm doing the cap kit. So I think if I get it all installed, then give it all a clean, you know, that'll, that'll work best. So um, yeah, let's crack open this Mega Drive. Now I've never opened a Mega Drive before. I know that there are six screws on the back, but that is the extent of my knowledge. I think there's some sort of power cable that runs to the LED. But aside from that, I've got no idea. So yeah, we've got these six screws there. Also, as a little bit of sort of shilling, um, if you want to help with the supplies for the repair bench, I've got an Amazon wish list, which is in the description. It's got loads of ridiculous expensive stuff on there that I plan to buy myself. But if you want to pick up a little uh, thing to it, I will dedicate it to you if you buy it for me. You know, we can have the IPA that's named after you or something. But it is filthy in here. It is absolutely disgusting. How does this connector come undone? It's really weird that. It's like the legs of the LED are actually through the connector. It is very strange. Okay. I'm going to take this shield off and see if I can get to the connector through that way. I don't think anyone's been into this console before because you've got like this red gluey stuff on one of the screws which looks like a sort of anti-tamper type thing. So it's, it's nice that it means it's sort of a genuine untampered example. I loved a bit of old uh, shielding on the old 90s consoles, didn't they? Let's break the seal on this red goopy one here.
be interesting to see what board revision I've got because there seems to be two main power boards this capacitor kit covers. But yeah, it's flipping filthy in here, it really is. It's almost filthy as your mum. Bye bye. I mean, actually, that said, the dirt seems to be concentrated around this part of the board. Oh, I bet that's got a really crunchy um, volume slider. because that's just covered in dust and filth. So yeah, you can see all the capacitors I'm going to change. I think there's like 20 or so of them. Right, how do I get this connector off? Why must you forsake me? This is such a knobhead. Right, I just had to undo it through the LED bit. Top off. Screw holding the board in here. See any other screws holding the board in? Oh, hang on. Is it the cartridge slot? There she blows. Yeah, that is disgusting. But this is our main area of concern at the moment. So these are the voltage regulators that we've got to um, take off. So what board do we have? We have got the IC BD M5 PAL. So I can move those instructions out of the way. Let's have a little zoom down. So yeah, we've got a lot of um, the capacitors sort of over here. It's interesting how they're all sort of bent over. They're like, uh, got to give them enough leg room to be able to bend, I guess. So we don't want them pulled in completely tight. Now, part of me thinks, should I just whip off all the capacitors in one foul swoop and then just refill them all. I mean, it doesn't seem like a terrible idea. I mean, the board is all marked where the positives are because with these types of capacitors, you've got to make sure you put them the right way around. So can you see there, for example, you've got the little positive symbol and there's a little stripy side which has the negative symbol on. So I think the board is pretty well marked. I think what I'm going to do is, on camera, I'm going to change these three capacitors here. No, actually, I'm going to change these four capacitors here, do them one at a time, and then um, smash through the others. Oh, look, there's, I've missed all those guys. Can you see that little collection down there? That's like a right little huddle of capacitors. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's um, replace these four guys. Okay, so I've got the microscope set up and it's kind of a bit more for you than it is for me, just so you can see the desoldering the caps in action. I've got the mooing soldering gun that you saw me unbox and play with in the last video. This is its first official outing. We can remove the solder from those two guys there and maybe a couple more in the area. And um, yeah, crack on. Let's see if it's warm enough yet. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Lovely. That's so smart. Right, we'll do C112 and C111. C1111. Yeah, 
This little tool is gonna be a game changer. I tell thee, I think it might be sensible to break the board into smaller chunks. Let's put the new capacitors back on. Okay, so we're looking at 66 and 68 here, and they both use the same type of capacitor, which is 47 UF at 16 volts. So you can see here, we've got the positive side. Now the positive side has the long leg and the negative side has the short leg. And we just sort of push it down in position. And then again, got 47 UF 16 volts. Positive long legs. And now we just slide 68 in. Lovely stuff. Now C112 is actually a different one. 10 UF 16 volts. And that goes in here. Long leg is positive. Short leg is negative. And then finally down here we've got C111 and that is another 47 UF 16 volts. Long leg positive. So I'm giving these all a little bit of a bend because that's what the existing ones were like. And it's a lot easier to bend them when they've got long legs than when they've got little legs and you've cropped them off. So you can see our four capacitors, their legs splaying everywhere and we need to solder them into position. I should flip and do that. Squeeze a little bit of flux on. Just to help that solder flow. And there we go. Four caps, all soldered in. Right, to spare you watching me do every single one of those, I think I'm just gonna have to power through and um, yeah, just get on with them. But that is the basic principle of replacing the capacitors. I've just got to do it like another 30 times now. Okay, so um, a little while has passed now and I've done pretty much all of this side of the board. All these guys need doing but I just thought I'd double check my working. It's still working, so that's good. Right, I'm gonna continue this tomorrow, so uh, back then. Hello, right, okay, so the solder guns are warming up and I thought I'd quickly discuss what you've just seen because I've edited the video actually and um, yeah, I wasn't entirely clear on some things. So I have done this part of the board here and um, I've got this part of the board to do. So there's a lot of capacitors underneath this heat sink. And I've also now put the board onto this sort of board holder. And it means I can spin the board backwards and forwards. That should speed things up, hopefully. Because this board is quite big, I think I need to remove this heat sink shieldy thing so I can spin it backwards and forwards. You can see that the actual voltage regulators are fixed to it. What we need to do is unscrew the two screws underneath here and that will make this loose, but we also need to unscrew the voltage regulators right there. And also, I do apologize, my voice is a bit croaky. I've uh, still got that cold. It's a bit annoying. So um, yeah, let's uh, whiz off these screws so we can see a bit more of the board. There does seem to be some thermal paste underneath the voltage regulators, so I'll replace that with some more modern thermal paste when we replace the voltage regulators. It's quite a um, hefty heat sink slash shield, but now we get a better look at all the capacitors we've got to do here and indeed here. But hopefully now I can spin that round and it just makes the job a little bit quicker because what I'd actually been doing with the moving desoldering gun is basically 
having the soldering gun on top and pulling the capacitors from underneath and that seemed to be the quickest way to do things. Now I can tug on the capacitors as I desolder them. Yeah, it's a bit tricky to work on because you've got the volume slider and sort of gets in the way, but yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna smash through and remove all of these capacitors in this area and uh, replace them. So let's smash through them. Okay, so you can see I've removed all of the capacitors from this area. It's a little bit fiddly because obviously you've got a few components around here that you don't want to remove, but you kind of almost see through the board about where the right components are to pull on, which is, is quite strange and doesn't really make any sense, but yeah, you just kind of get a feeling that you're going for the right capacitors. Now you might have seen that some of them were a bit of a struggle to actually get out so what I was doing was getting some nice fresh solder and just melting it on there and then just using the solder sucker again and it just made them come straight out so yeah that was uh, that seemed a good idea on my part so what's next I think I'm going to I think I'm going to put all the capacitors back in this part but what I'm going to do is give the board a quick wash down with some IPA and just give it a bit of a clean and um, uh, just make sure that the area that the capacitors are going back into are nice and clean. So uh, let's do that. Oh, also, something that I've been doing is crossing off everything as I go just to make organizing it all a little bit easier because there's a lot you need to think about. So uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna start at C79 and work my way down to here and get those guys all filled in. So let's do that. Okay, so we are sort of on our final furlong with the capacitors now. We've just got this area left to do. Now the capacitor kit notes that C24 doesn't always necessarily need doing. And um, yeah, I think it's the case here because if you look at C24 and it's got something else there, maybe it's another kind of capacitor, not entirely sure. So I don't need to remove that, I don't think. But yeah, I think there's sort of 12 capacitors left and then we've just got the voltage regulators to do. So I'm gonna just carry on getting these out, similar to how I did before, just using the solder sucker gun and uh, pulling them out as I go.
Awesome, so all those caps are out and I've given the area a bit of a clean up. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the regulators out um, because they sort of get in the way of where the caps are going. So yeah, I'm gonna remove these, but I won't put them back in until I put the heat shield back in and you'll see why then, hopefully. Yeah, let's get these unsuckered. That is all the desoldering complete. And I'm pretty glad about that because it's taken ages. I do really enjoy doing cap kits, but it is very time consuming. So yeah, let's give that a clean and then we'll reinstall the caps that we took out with new ones, not old ones. There we go, it's all done. Capacitors are all replaced and I think everything is okay. Now the only job really to do now is to put the voltage regulators back. Well, put the new ones in at least. So we've got to put the shielding thing back in position, something like that. And then we have to put the regulators in because they have to fit through the little screw holes there and um, I'll put a little bit of thermal paste behind them as well. Because this dictates how high it should be, yeah, you can't really put the regulators in first. So I've got to screw this back into position and cover up all my lovely cap work and um, put the regulators in. Let's do that. So here are our new regulators. And they sort of go down here. I'm just gonna go and get some thermal paste to put a little glob on the back of each, just so it makes thermal contact with this guy and helps keep them cool. Okay, so just a little dab of the incorrect amount of thermal paste. Yeah, I'm just using some Arctic MX2 thermal compound. Should do the trick. I think I went a bit OTT with this one, but never mind. Good, good. Right. So those are nicely in position. So now we've got to flip the board over, trim the legs slightly, and then solder them. Or solder them, then trim the legs. Right, so we've got some fairly lengthy legs sticking through. I'm just going to give them a little trim with some side cutters. And again. Perfect. Lovely, so we've just been left with some little tiny stumps for us to solder in position. So let's do that. So there we go, one fully capped board with our nice new voltage regulators. Will it work still though? That is the question. Let me just clamp it into position and um, we'll give it a quick test. One moment, please. There we go. 
Hopefully, yep, right. Come on. Boom! It's working. I mean, I'm, I know I shouldn't be surprised. I should have more faith in my work, but I have replaced a lot of components on something I've never worked on before, and it's working. Brilliant. Right, next up, cleaning, um, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna do that tomorrow, so we'll pick up tomorrow and we'll get the case clean and I'll finish up cleaning the board, although I think it's pretty much all right. And then we can get it all back together. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Right, well, we're getting there. Now I gave this a bit of a wash in the sink off camera. Um, I did the back and the front of the case and it is looking a lot better. There's still a few little bits of paint, but I do just need to give these little grills here a little touch up with an IPA and a cotton bud. But yeah, it's looking so much nicer than it did. So I thought I'd quickly do that on camera, um, but this video is getting really long. So I thought I'd keep the washing and stuff off camera because essentially that was me just washing stuff in a sink. The only problem is you can't really fully submerge this because the LED, is sort of sealed in. I've actually ordered the mod kit for this for the PAL and NTSC mod, and that actually replaces the LED. So I think when that arrives, I can give this all a bit more of a sort of fog clean and submerge it and everything like that because you have to replace it. So um, yeah, let's um, just get a little bit of IPA down these grills. By all means, not perfect, but a little bit better. Now we've just got to reassemble it. And now annoyingly, I've forgotten where all these screws go, but because I've got a nice overhead camera, I can actually play back the footage in reverse and that will help me know how to put it all back together. So let's quickly reassemble it. Get this all back together. There we go, all done. That looks so much better, doesn't it? It's not perfect. I mean, I did think about maybe using some sort of plastic restorer on it. I might do that in a future episode, but that's definitely better than how it looked. Actually, let's do a comparison. I'll put up what it used to look like and now what it looks like. That's all right, isn't it? Now, this is all really sort of a bit uh, moot if it doesn't work. I think it will work. Um, but yeah, so let's get some cables and plug it in and finish up. Okay, so we're all plugged in and we've got Sonic the Hedgehog there ready to go. So um, let's slip him in and see what happens. On. Oh. No power LED. Let me just check that. Oh, hang on. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, so I might have got the uh, power LED wet and um, that's why it's not working. But that's not the end of the world, thankfully, because as I said earlier, I've ordered the region mod kit and it does come with a replacement LED. So that's fine. <sighs> You had no idea how panicked I was then. But so yeah, what I'll do to this console in future is we'll install the uh, PAL slash NTSC mod on it so we can change the refresh rate the games run at 
and also allow me to play foreign games if I want to. So yeah, it's been a bit of a labour of love this. It's taken a long time to film and indeed edit. You've probably seen me change clothes multiple times. The lighting's changed and everything like that. And it's it's been on my bench for a couple of days now, but I'm really, really pleased with how it's all turned out. And if you could please make sure you give this video a solid thumbs up maybe even tell a friend, that'd be really appreciated. I've got various fix-it things to come. I've got to try and repair the Sonic 2 game. I'm gonna recap the Mega Drive 2. I'm going to repair the game gears. So there's lots of fixing stuff coming up, as well as all the normal stuff that I put out. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this has all gone and I hope you like the finished result. So hmm, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.